Mark Bridges, uh, you're the costume designer for News of the World, uh, which is your third film with uh, director Paul Greengrass after Captain Phillips and Jason Bourne, but I believe it's the first Western for both of you. Um, like, what was it like bringing kind of uh, a, a fresh perspective to this genre? Well, very exciting. Very exciting to work in a period that I hadn't worked in before. Um, the, the research process, was drawings and primary research of photographs from the period, um, newspapers, and then just trying to think about what these lives are like, what they're able to uh, acquire. Of course, there are given circumstances and lifestyles in the script as far as uh, in uh, Native American wear, uh, what's appropriate for 1870s young women's wear, uh, men's wear, dressed up and traveling. These were all givens in the script. Also, I know Paul after two other films and, and he likes a very textured, very gritty look with the background, very uh, undesigned, if you will, uh, uh, very rough, I think he mentioned one time to me, the Grapes of Wrath. And even though it's a different uh, period, I, I think the texture was something that I tried to give him. And I think we were successful. And as you mentioned, uh, like the characters in this world have, have, have a kind of like rough lived in quality in terms of their clothing. Uh, uh, what was it like, you know, how did you go about creating that kind of weathered look, like really making these clothes look like, you know, that they've not only been designed, but they've actually already lived a, a long life with these characters? Well, I, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, a, a breakdown artist, um, Catalina Itiraldi, who also did all my breakdown and dying work for uh, the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix and and she made everything new, looked lived in for that and also did an amazing job on this film, you know, because we made several versions of all of, of Captain Kidd, Tom Hanks's clothes, and also several versions of the clothes for Joanna. So they just needed to be <laughs> sanded, painted, wetted, dragged, you know, through the parking lot, whatever it took. And uh, we were lucky enough to, lucky and unlucky, two things. When we were preparing this film and, and acquiring clothes for all the background players or just getting a stock to take with us to New Mexico, um, there were quite a few films being done in this period. So, so we came late to the party and all that was left, fortunately, was the things that needed very little distressing. Okay, that was, we got left with just the right kind of clothes that we needed for the texture of our film. And uh, I felt fortunate for that little aspect that Although we were last to come to the party, we got exactly what we wanted. Uh, and the film is based on a novel by Paulette Giles. Um, and you know, so did you read that? Uh, you know, to take any inspiration from that in terms of uh, what the characters might look like, or, or did you focus on basically the script? No, I, I usually when I work on a film that's based on a book, I uh, just deal with the script. However, I thought I might be able to get some clues from the original material. And I did, I and mean, there are pieces, there's a, a, a Mexican serape garment that it, Paul at Giles talks about that we incorporated into the costume plot, um, had it custom made for us in Mexico actually. Um, just some things about the peripheral characters as well. You just take little clues about how she describes them and then you formulate an idea and, and run it by Paul to see if that jives with the film he's making, you know? And um, so I did use the original material for as much as I could. 
And, uh, you know, Tom Hanks has sort of two uh, uh, primary looks in the film that we see him in. There's, there's what he's wearing on the road and uh, mm -hmm. sort of more performative look when he's, he's reading the news as part of the job. Um, how did you, like, you know, generate these looks to, like, you did you start sketching first or like where, where did the inspiration for like the details of, of those looks come from? Generating those looks. That's interesting. You know, I, I love the, one of the first things that I do in my process is try to put my hands on actual garments. So um, we did research at some local uh, rental houses that also have an archive of original garments that we can look at the details of where a seam is on the shoulder or uh, the shape of a sleeve or the fabrications. Um, so we, so I found an incredible uh, black top coat that he would wear during his readings and, you know, followed the clues to that as far as how the shoulders were cut, the slimness of the sleeve, the material of the top collar. Uh, we had fabric woven for his on the road uh, wear for his trousers and for his jackets because we needed quite a bit of it and I wanted that kind of hand loomed quality to it. Uh, and so that was the process of samples and sending things back and forth to New York and no, could it be a little more of this? And luckily I had a very good prep on this. So. But also I find uh, a shape shape that I like and a shape for boots. We had boots made. Just you, you find real garments that kind of speak to you and, and go off of that. And we didn't see, we made everything. I had Tom's measurements and we didn't see him until sort of late in the game, shortly before we were going to go to New Mexico and shortly before we were going to shoot. And, and happily, uh, it was the successful first fitting, and he felt very comfortable. And so we proceeded to make the, the many multiples. But sometimes you just have to go for it. And this is one case where I just went for it, and luckily it worked out. And uh, his, his primary co-star, Helena Zengel, uh, costumes are so much uh, kind of inform that character for us because when we meet her, uh, uh, she's uh, you know, she has just left the, the her Kiowa family. Um, and so she is dressed in that uh, Native American uh, clothing. Um, and then we later see her, you know, she's given uh, this more colonial traditional dress that she, you know, she kind of rebels against. Uh, so what, especially the Kiowa uh, costume, like what, what kind of research did you do into that culture or, you know, to, to kind of inform who that character was from a costume level? Yes, you know, it was fascinating to me, first of all, uh, knowing Paul Greengrass and, and and wanting his desire for authenticity. Uh, I knew that I would have to find a source for uh, deer hides, tanned deer hides. And so we did in Florida and uh, the and found out during the process that the way that they create the depth of color was by smoking a smoking process. So when we finally got the hides, we'd open up the storage room and this waft of bonfire would hit us in the face. And so that was a learning curve there, but it, it really made it feel real to us. And then of course, researching, you see a lot of images and then you would find out how these were made. It was basically a three skin garment, a one skin for the front, one skin for the back, and then folded over for the shoulders. And it was quite typical of the plains, the Native Americans who lived on the plains. It was very typical shape of garment for them. And <clears throat> we had examples of real period garments that were a bit more decorated than what we used in the film. But Paul actually wanted things to be very plain. And I, I think his instinct is right because you want Helena's acting, the character of Cicada to shine through and not looking at all the fussiness of, of details on the costume. So, and then her, and then making her uh, 1860s young lady's dress, uh, it 
came right from research, although sourcing the fabric was a bit difficult because uh, they do create a lot of Civil War type pattern fabrics at quilters, but they only sell a small amount of it because people only need very small amounts for their quilt. So I think we had to go to about eight, eight or nine sources to get enough of that one fabric to make her garments. And um, it was just a great, I had wonderful cutters and, and things to create the jacket that she wears. And uh, just all in all, just every day was a joy to show up and try to figure this out and represent these characters as best as I could. Uh, well, uh, congratulations on your film. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. And we will have you back for our group chat uh, soon.